Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Thank you for being with us tonight. My name is Noam Dahari, and I'm the JNF uh, professional this evening. I'm the Associate Director for Mountain States and Pacific Northwest Jewish National Fund. Um, and I'm so happy to see you. We have a great evening for you tonight. Um, and um, in this amazing event that we have together with uh, the local Denver-based mythology distillery. Um, and yeah, this evening we're going to, uh, to, to mix three different drinks and in between uh, get to know each other, get to know Jewish National Fund and what we do. And it's going to be great. Uh, so, um, uh, oh yeah. Very important, very important. At the end of the evening, um, after we're, we're done with, with our drinks and we're all happy enough, uh, we're also gonna play a Kahoot trivia game. So make sure to download the app. It takes exactly a few seconds. Uh, so download the app during, uh, during the program if you don't have it, and then you'll get a chance to uh, win a, a bottle from uh, Mythology Distillery, which is, which is great. Um, also, also, please keep your cameras on. Uh, it really helps us to, to feel that we're together, right? To feel that we're all together in the same room in our virtual happy hour. Um, so if you feel comfortable, please keep your cameras on as much as possible and prepare your materials because we're just about to start. So um, please prepare a shaker or a jar um, and the kit that we delivered you with all the, uh, the beautiful bottles from mythology and, um, and, and the other ingredients and uh, ice, and what else, Holly? Anything that I forgot? A peeler? Peeler, uh, just a citrus knife or whatever knife you have in your house would be perfectly fine. And I think you named everything else. Perfect, yeah. And if any of you have any difficult, any technical difficulties during the event, feel free to call me. I'm going to put my number on the chat right now. Um, and Sheris, go ahead and start us. Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Sharis Klein Berlinberg. I am one of the co-chairs of the JNF Mountain States Board. We are so happy that all of you joined us for our virtual happy hour this evening. At times when it's really hard to build community, meet new friends and hang out with old ones, I'm so grateful that we can hang out with each other tonight and celebrate everything the JNF does for Israel. And of course, have a good time. A special thank you to Ryan Cohen, our fabulous event chair. He did make this event possible and he connected us to Mythology Distillery. We are super proud to be partnering with Mythology for the event this evening and to support a local Colorado business. And now get those shakers ready and let's begin. Nice, thank you so much for the intro. I'm excited to be here, you guys. How are, how are we all doing this evening? We're good? I know we're muted, but thumbs up is perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. Great. Well, uh, my name is Holly Young. I am the Community Outreach Coordinator with Mythology Distillery. So my job kind of uh, involves everything from doing these virtual events, hopefully in-person events at some point. Um, I do lots of marketing and just basically community partnerships. So feel free to reach out uh, to me if you have any interest in any of that stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and get back to my spot, and then I can explain a little bit about our distillery. Just squeeze on my way back there. All right, so Mythology Distillery was actually started just two years ago in 2018, a little over two years now. Um, my boss, Scott Gates, and a couple of his friends were on an awesome backcountry skiing trip through Alaska. And every night after they would get off of the slopes and they would be done mountain biking, all they wanted to do was get together and enjoy awesome craft spirits together. And this kind of sparked an epiphany in them. They realized that craft spirits really do have a way of bringing people together. They also have a way of inspiring us to share our stories with the people we love the most. So this is kind of the philosophy behind the business. And because of that, we do everything in our power to unite the community and really be a part of the community in as much of a mutually beneficial way as possible. So again, we're really excited to be here. Um, I know we've only been around for two years, but we've actually been named top Colorado distillery for the two consecutive years that we've been open. So that's really exciting. We also have 50 domestic and international awards from things like the World Spirits Competition. We've got multiple best in class rankings. We've got multiple double gold medals. So we really do have a lot to be proud about. Um, and I'm excited to be able to share that with you guys tonight. 
So we'll start with a super easy cocktail. We're gonna start with a vodka gimlet. So if you have your ingredients list pulled up, I see you guys, yeah, I see somebody in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready too. All right, so we've got our cocktail shaker. You need your strainer. You need a jigger, which is a measurement device, the citrus knife for your uh, garnish, and then we've got our cocktail glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, a vodka gimlet is a really good cocktail to begin with, especially because proportionally, it's gonna teach you how to make a lot of different cocktails. So if you look at the recipe list, you've got lime juice, you've got simple syrup, and you've got vodka. Now, if you exchange the vodka for tequila and you add in agave instead of that simple syrup, you now have a margarita. If you exchange the uh, vodka in this cocktail for whiskey, you have a whiskey sour. So again, this is a really versatile recipe and it's good to know these proportions as you go into cocktail making with other spirits as well. So the way I build cocktails is by always starting with the cheapest ingredient. And the way I do, or the reason I do this is because then if I screw up, the only thing I've wasted is what's cheap. I don't wanna start with my spirit. That way if I screw up, I'm not throwing away all that spirit. So in our vodka gimlet, the cheapest ingredient is going to be our simple syrup. We've got the simple syrup here. We only need a quarter ounce, or sorry, a half ounce of the simple syrup. So if you wanna go ahead and measure out just a half ounce, and add it to your cocktail shaker. Our next cheapest ingredient is going to be the lime juice. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my lime juice. I know you guys have fresh limes. Always better to make cocktails with freshly squeezed juice when you have the option. We're just gonna do three quarter ounces of that lime juice. So to reiterate, we've got a half ounce of simple syrup and we've got three quarter ounces of lime juice. Next, we're gonna open up our vodka. Now I know that your uh, bottles don't have labels on them, but if you can see the image on the front of this bottle, it's got this cool jungle girl and a tiger. This is our jungle cat vodka. So if you can find the bottle with a cool jungle looking girl with a nice hat, yeah, she's fresh and styling. If you wanna go ahead and get that bottle out, that is your jungle cat vodka. And we are going to mix with two ounces of that jungle cat vodka. Our jungle cat is a, it's been distilled to be a very clean and smooth uh, vodka, essentially distilled to have pretty neutral flavor. So it's really, really good for these classic uh, cocktails that want to showcase that citrus flavor. So now we've got all of our ingredients in the cocktail shaker, which means we are ready to shake. You're going to get some ice cubes and put them in the other half of your shaker, or if you're using a mason jar, just throw them right on in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and shake it up. Now my shaker is chilled, which means that the cocktail inside has been chilled. I'm going to pop it open. And then I'm going to use my strainer so that I can strain out all those tiny bits of ice cubes that I just broke up in here because you don't want that in your final product. I'm gonna strain into a cocktail glass with no ice and served up. And last but not least, we're gonna garnish with a lime wheel. So you can go ahead and slice off a little lime wheel. I'm gonna put a little slit down the middle and then I can garnish that glass. And you've got yourself a vodka gimlet with our jungle cat vodka. So cheers to you guys, enjoy this, and I'll pass it back to uh, the folks at JNF and they can get their program started. Hi everybody, my name is Hillary. This is David back here just mixing up that last cocktail. I'm excited to try it. Uh, we are about to break out into some small breakout rooms um, to get to know each other a little bit. Uh, like Holly just said, drinks bring people together. So let's all enjoy this drink together. We have about eight minutes and we wanna hear a little bit from everybody in the group. So go ahead and say your name, um, tell a little bit about yourself, maybe what you do for a living or something you're passionate about. And we would love to hear um, what Netflix show you're binging right now. 
Um, we will put up a one minute warning when it's time to come back to the, to the main room. Um, but we have eight minutes. I'll see some of you shortly. than Chicago. Not this week. I mean, not this week. This pretty chilly. Are you You're having the negative weather too? Yeah, we have, uh, I think, uh, a high of 15 in, uh, in, in a couple of days. We're high of five. Oh, there you go. You won. Thank you. All right, we're all back. Welcome all right. back, everybody. All right, hi everyone. Um, and Holly, we're back to you. Yeah, let's do it. So the next cocktail we've got lined up is our gin fizz. Uh, if you've got the recipe list pulled up, you might notice that you could make this either with an egg white or without. I know if you've never had an egg white cocktail, that probably sounds horrifying. Um, oh, and Holly, I, I have to just add something and to, uh, to tell everyone that if you have any questions, um, something that you can't figure out what to do, so unmute yourself and ask, feel free. We're a family here. Absolutely, this is a conversation, not a presentation for sure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make the cocktail with an egg white, because if you're not making it with the egg white, it's gonna be the exact same process as the last cocktail. If you do make it with the egg white, we're gonna add an extra step. So that's why I'm gonna demonstrate it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and get back in my spot and then we can get moving. All right, so if you're looking at the recipe, you know, I just explained with the vodka gimlet, we can change out the spirit that we're using and use those same proportions to create many other different cocktails. So you might notice that this cocktail actually has the exact same proportions of very similar ingredients, making it kind of a riff of that gimlet. So let's go ahead and get started with the egg white. I'm gonna do the egg white first, that way if I screw up the egg white, I don't mess up the rest of my cocktail. We're gonna do this by filtering out the egg white using the shell, the old baking trick. If you've never had an egg white cocktail, egg white uh, kind of just creates a frothy texture. It really doesn't add an egg flavor to it. A lot of people get uh, lost in the idea of it being an egg and it's totally healthy for you. Um, yeah. So we've got the egg white in first. Next, we're gonna need that simple syrup again. We only need a half ounce, just like last time. Got a half ounce of the simple syrup. And Holly, I'll just add that you told me that if you don't have simple syrup, it's totally fine just to, uh, to use some sugar, right? Absolutely, yeah. You can just throw the sugar down in there. It may not integrate as well, and that's why people traditionally do use simple syrup because that solution has been all mixed together. Uh, but there's no problem in putting grain sugar in your drink. You just might want to shake it a little bit longer. And the next we've got our lemon juice. Same ratio as last time, three quarter ounces of that lemon juice. And then the spirit that we're using in this cocktail is our needle pig gin. The image on this label, we've got this woodsy looking guy with a headband and he's got like a werewolf looking guy on the other side. That's your needle pig gin. So we're going to go ahead and crack that bottle open. And we've got two ounces of that needle pig gin. Now, if you are making this with an egg white in it, do not put any ice in the shaker to begin with. You're gonna to wanna to dry shake this cocktail first. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shake up what I have. Then once it's nice and integrated, I'm gonna pop it open and I'm gonna add those ice cubes. And then I'm also going to add ice cubes to my highball glass because this time we are going to serve this on the rocks. And now we're going to shake it up once again. Put some ice 
in there. So you know what? Just don't listen to me. Yes, I did. Okay, we can't give up. Now, since I have egg white in this cocktail, I'm going to double strain it. All that means is I'm going to take that regular cocktail strainer, and I'm also going to hold this fine mesh strainer over the top of my drink. It's going to collect any of the weird pieces of egg white that didn't get fully dissolved into that cocktail. That is beautiful, if I say so myself. And then we are going to top this off with soda, the club soda. That's what makes it the fizz, the gin fizz. And mine bubbled over a little bit, which is kind of pretty. I'll roll with it since we're already here. And then we're going to garnish with a lemon peel. So if you want to get your peeler out. A good tip for any time you're using citrus to garnish a cocktail, especially a citrus peel, You'll notice we've got the outside of the peel. We've got the inside of the peel, which has all the pit. We're gonna take the outside of the peel, point it face down toward our drink and then squeeze. It's gonna express all of the oils from that lemon peel onto the top of the drink. That way when you lift it to your mouth, it smells of that great lemon aroma. And then we'll go ahead and put that lemon peel right in the top of the drink. And you got yourself a gin fizz. I'll bring this over so that you guys can see it. If you did not make this drink with an egg white, you will notice mine has this frothy top. It's kind of like the head of a beer. This is what happens when you add a white to a cocktail. It creates a really interesting texture. So cheers to you guys. Enjoy your gin fizz, and I will throw it back to Jay and F until we come back for our last cocktail. All right, Holly, and our, and, and our little, uh, thank you for, for teaching us so much. Our little lesson to you, we say lechaim. Lechaim, everyone. All right, Yaron, we're to you. Take it away. Oh, sorry, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan, take it away. No, I'm I'm here specifically to introduce your own. There you go. Uh, my name is Ryan Cohn. I um, I guess I'm the chair of this event. I just I'm really grateful that you are all here. Grateful for Holly and uh, Mythology's participation, and really grateful to uh, Noam and the national team for helping put this together so quickly. Um, Really quickly, I just want to tell you a little bit about why JNF is important to me. I, I, I don't have, you know, the same story that a lot of these people have where they grew up or spent time on a kibbutz or they have, you know, part of their life story spent in Israel, even learning Hebrew at, you know, a Jewish day school. I don't really have that, but Israel. I consider myself more of a Zionist than a religious Jew. And uh, this group is really important to me. And, you know, I think that a lot of people when they're getting into this group can be a little bit uh, afraid of how formidably passionate some people are and how um, how far back their story goes. And I'm kind of like, I guess the, the polar opposite of that. And, you know, I got into this pretty blind um, to learn more about how I can give back to Israel and give back to the cause in general and my own people. Um, without knowing a ton about it. So if you're kind of in that camp, I encourage you to move forward um, regardless and to be curious um, and to come to more of these. Um, we try to make them really approachable. So we hope to see you again if this is one of your first events. And with that, I wanted to introduce your own Marcus, who is kind of the counterweight to that story. He has, you know, a, a great affinity and a great story going back to his time spent in Israel and his family's relation to the nation. <laughs> Um, with that, I will give it over to your own and let him take it from here. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, somebody is not muted there. It was cutting into uh, Ryan's talk a little. So if you guys could all just make sure you're muted really quickly, that'd be awesome. Uh, Sheris earlier alluded to seeing some old friends. I think she was talking about me. Uh, <laughs> but I have to say, um, it was such a privilege and an honor to serve on the JNF Future Board here in Denver uh, and, and being able to, to watch and be a part of a region that really exploded in growth and uh, led the nation in innovation. We came up with so many program ideas and 
other types of ideas that are now part of the standard operating procedure for the rest of the country. And it was all born right here. Um, I also uh, had the honor of serving on the JNF Futures National Board as well. But I have to tell you, uh, I am immensely proud of all of you, Sheris, Ryan, the whole team, for putting together such great events like this one and doing so at a time when hosting events is, let's say, challenging to say the least. Uh, we have a great turnout tonight, so thank you to all of you for being here and being engaged. Uh, quickly, some background. During my time as a JNF Future, I attended every conference, I attended every leadership summit, I attended everything I could because I met some truly incredible people that have really enriched my life. And then I, I have to say one of the highlights, I, I got to chair a JNF Future mission to Israel where I got to see our donations at work and meet the people who are directly affected by them. And that experience really hits home because it gives you the complete picture of the work that we're doing. Eventually, I was deemed too old to play with the JNF Futures. And so uh, I have since transitioned into my current role as the major gifts chair for the Mountain States region here at home. I am also a member of MACOR, which is the JNF National Speakers Bureau. There, I get to travel all around the country, raising awareness about JNF and the work that we do, and of course, raising funds to support those endeavors. So why am I in front of you tonight? I'm in front of you tonight for two reasons. The first, is to be an example of what comes next after JNF Future, to show you what your JNF involvement might look like once you're over the age of 40. But the second reason that I'm here is to make sure that you are aware that in these unprecedented times, the need for donations remains critical. Thousands of young professionals in Israel have lost their jobs due to the pandemic. Now, JNF has always sought to create jobs that help keep younger Israelis our age employed and doing so in the South, not just in Tel Aviv where everybody wants to go work. So the best example of this is uh, the Eretz Ear Project, which is part of the Louder Employment Center, which is located in Be'er Sheva in the Negev, in the South. And Tamar Gill, the Associate Director of the Louder Employment Center, will be joining us in a few minutes. Uh, she'll tell you a little bit more about the work that they do there. Look, if you, like me, are fortunate enough to still be employed, and you, like me, did not see your income diminish over the last year, then you and me have a responsibility to step up when others can't. We have a responsibility to shoulder more of the burden, pick up the slack when others are unable to do so. We need to dig deeper. We need to give more when it is so badly needed. So as you enjoy the rest of this program, and that third cocktail, please consider how you will answer the call for help. Remember that in JNF, we are a nation of doers, not dreamers. And what that means, what that boils down to is that it's time to do something, make an impact on those in Israel who really need our help right now. So with that, uh, I'd like to welcome Tamar Gill from the Lauder Employment Center. And uh, Tamar, take it away. Hi, everyone. Great to be here with you. My name is Tamar Gill, and I'm the Associate Director for the Lauder Employment Center. The Lauder Center was established in 2015 by Ronald Lauder and Jewish National Fund in order to help Negev college graduates find a job straight after graduation and keep them in the Negev. 
The region is an awesome place to live in. So many young adults, young families can find an incredible quality of life. But there's a problem because there's a misconception about job opportunities. And for years, negative young adults, straight after graduation, moved to the Tel Aviv area because that's where they thought the job opportunities were and only there. The Lauder Employment Center is working with negative companies, with negative colleges, and with the young adults themselves in order to create new solutions to these long-time problems. We created a Human Resource Directors Forum in order to understand continuously the needs of negative companies and then try to answer them. We work with career centers and colleges in order to help them better prepare their students for the job market straight after graduation. And we work with young adults, helping them land their first job, go to a job interview, write their CV, and do internship programs, especially for engineers, in order to keep them here after college. The minute that a young adult says, I can't find a job here, I move into Tel Aviv, the chance of getting them back to the Negev is very, very slim. That's why we're focusing on these young adults. Over the last six years, we've been able to find placement for 2,000 young adults who stayed in the Negev following graduation. The economy today is horrible globally, and Israel is no different. Uh, the job market here is very harsh, and the group that was hit the hardest are young adults ages 25 to 34. There's 250,000 young adults those ages that are out of a job today. And studies show that if a young graduate can't find a job in the field that they studied in, in the first one or two years, the chances for them to find a good placement and to actually build their careers go from low to very, very low. That is why right now we're working as hard as we can to change the way that companies hire young adults, move to remote employment, for companies in the center of Israel to remotely hire people in the south and in the north, because the Lauder Employment Center is now working in Aqua as well since 2021. We're also working with small business owners in order to help them sell more online and have lower shipping costs in order to increase the sales uh, all across Israel. This is our way of strengthening the negative economy. And we really do thank Jewish National Fund for everything that it is doing to help us do that. Thank you uh, for that, Tamar. That was really, really good. Uh, I, I hope the statistic that we just heard really resonated with you. 250,000 young adults ages 25 to 35 out of work uh, because of the pandemic and the strains on the economy, economy that that has caused. And uh, we have the ability, we are in a position to help and make a difference. Um, without further ado, I wanna pass it back to Holly. We have another cocktail coming. And uh, thank you all very, very much for having me with you this evening. Holly, before, before you go, um, Yolan, thank you so much for, for being here tonight. And the one thing I wanna add to this is that what I love about what we're doing is that we were just touched uh, an amazing JNF project that deals with young adults in Israel. And, and beyond the projects and beyond what we do, it's really this people to people connection that we're doing. And we're here in, in all of us here in, in the States, in Denver, other places here in America now, and talking and thinking about our peers and friends, um, same ages, you know, same life, same problems in Israel. And this people to people connection is, is really one of the, the biggest things that we're, that we're trying to do in an evening like this. Uh, Yaron, thank you again so much. And Holly, we're with you. Yeah, absolutely. As though you guys need a third cocktail. Um, it, it never hurts, but well, sometimes it hurts, but that's really incredible to hear all of the really impactful work you guys are doing. So again, we're really excited to be here tonight. Thank you again for having us. We've got one more cocktail for you. Um, before we dig into that, I do want to let you know that we've been able to create a discount code in our system for all of you guys. Um, if you want to come into the distillery anytime in the next month, you can get any bottle off 10, sorry, any bottle 10% off with the discount JNF. So if you just come in here, let one of our bartenders know you're interested in buying a bottle, you can get 10% off of that bottle with the code JNF. 
for the rest of the month. So one month from now, so in mid-March, I suppose that'll expire. But yeah, super awesome. Hope you guys take advantage of that because if you haven't already found out, our spirits are incredible and they're very versatile, can be used in lots of different ways. So now is the fun part. Uh, my personal favorite is uh, whiskey. So I'm excited to dig into this old fashioned. Again, I'm gonna scoot back, weasel my way into my spot and we'll get started. So the difference in this cocktail is that we're actually gonna be stirring it. You can either use a mixing glass, you can stir it directly in the glass you're gonna serve it in. And if you don't have a fancy mixing glass, just any old pint glass will do. Another reason we're stirring this instead of shaking it is we typically shake cocktails that have things like citrus or egg white, anything thicker, anything that needs to be aerated in it. In the old fashioned, we have ingredients that are pretty simple to mix together. And typically in your spirit forward cocktails, you're gonna to want to just stir those ingredients rather than shaking them. That way you don't dilute them too much because again, an old fashioned is supposed to be a spirit forward cocktail. Um, if you've got your whiskey out, you'll notice there's only one whiskey, so it should be easy to tell which one it is. But you'll see this cool, again, frontiersman looking guy with this crazy hat on. It looks like he came straight out of Game of Thrones. This is our Hellbear American whiskey. Um, the reason we use our American whiskey rather than our bourbon in an old fashioned is because our American whiskey is very rye forward. If you're not familiar with rye, it's a grain just like wheat. You know, we got rye bread is pretty spicy. Wheat bread is pretty soft and sweet. So the same thing goes for when you use those grains in your whiskey. If it's a primarily wheated whiskey, it's gonna show up as a very soft, sweet whiskey. This is primarily rye forward, meaning it's gonna show up in your cocktails as being very cinnamon spice forward which is really great for an old fashioned because we're about to add in a couple sweet or a sweet ingredient and some bitters. And we don't want that sweeter whiskey to be overshadowed by the sweetness of the sweet, the, I'm just saying sweet a lot, the sweetness of the sugar component that we're putting in. So instead we need that really spicy whiskey to balance out the sweetness of that simple syrup. So for our old fashioned, our cheapest ingredient is our bitters. I know that uh, we weren't able to get bitters in your kits. Some of you may have gone out and purchased them. Some of you might've had that at home. If not, it's fine. Um, this is kind of a trademark of an old fashioned. Bitters, we like to say in the cocktail world, are kind of like your salt and pepper. Like it's not gonna completely change the flavor of your cocktail, but it's gonna accent the flavors that you've put in there and really bring out the notes that you want to. I'm gonna start with the bitters as it's the cheapest ingredient because we're only using a little bit. It calls for two dashes on your recipe. I'm kind of crazy. I like four dashes of bitters in my old fashioned. The beauty about the old fashioned is you can really change this cocktail up in very slight ways to have it fit your own flavor profiles and palettes that you prefer. So I'm gonna go with four dashes of bitters because I'm crazy. Standard is usually two dashes of bitters. Next, we're gonna be using our sweetening component. You guys have simple syrup, and the reason we've uh, put simple syrup on the menu is because you already had to make it for the other cocktails, so we figured it was nice and easy. I'm going to be using turbinado syrup. Let me just explain the difference and why I use this really quick. This is how we make our old fashions in-house, and I encourage you, if you are going to try to make old fashions at home into the future, that you try to do this as well. Um, with your simple syrup, if you remember, you boiled a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar and water, just regular sugar and water. That's simple syrup. Anytime you're making a rich syrup, you're going to be making that with a ratio of two to one sugar to water. So it's rich, right? Because it has more sugar content. That also means it's going to be a little bit thicker in viscosity. And then the reason that this is not clear, like your simple syrup, is because I've used turbinado or unbleached sugar. It's going to add a little bit of a richer kind of brown sugar element to your old fashioned. So yes, we do it slightly differently here. Simple syrup is perfectly fine. So that's how we're going to build it in the ones that you're making at home. With an old fashioned, standard is typically about a quarter ounce of that sweetener. So I'm just gonna do a quarter ounce, which is not a whole lot. You will notice that quickly. If you like your cocktail sweeter, you are always more than welcome to add extra sugar. We just do it on the boozy side to begin with, because again, an old fashioned is meant to be a spirit forward cocktail. So we're gonna start by showcasing that spirit. And then if your palate requires more sugar, you can always add some more afterward. Now, this is an easy, we call this a three touch cocktail because there are just three ingredients. And this was the first cocktail I learned how to make for myself at home. And I think the same goes for a lot of people because it's really easy to remember two ounces, two dashes, and then one quarter ounce of syrup. And the beauty is again, you can change out the bitters. So right here I have classic aromatic, which is gonna be very cinnamon forward. 
But if I wanted to go crazy and get black walnut bitters, that's going to change the flavor of the drink. If I want to go crazy and get mole bitters, I can have a spicy drink. Um, if you want to change up the syrup component, like say it's fall and you're feeling like you want some fall spice in your old fashioned, you could make an apple cider syrup or a mold wine syrup to use in place of this. It's a really customizable cocktail and super easy to make at home. <clears throat> so I definitely recommend playing around with that. Last but not least, we do have two ounces of our spirit, which in this case is our Hellbear American Whiskey. And there we are. Now we just add our ice, both to the mixing glass and also to the serving glass. stir this cocktail. Uh, there's no science to how long you should stir it. It kind of depends on the size of your ice cubes and how diluted you want your cocktail to be. But I just go with the standard 10 seconds if I'm not entirely sure. So stir for about 10 seconds. It's going to dilute your cocktail just a little bit to so take the edge off. And it's also going to integrate all of those ingredients together. Now, if you mixed it just straight up in your serving glass, you're just going to leave it as is and you're going to drink it after you garnish it. But if you are going to strain it, that's what you're going to do next. Strain it right over those rocks. And now we are going to garnish with an orange peel. Uh, some people like to garnish with a Luxaro cherry or maraschino cherry as well. It's kind of up to you. But as far as muddling cherries and oranges goes, we don't typically do that. Um, like I said, it wants to be spirit forward. So we're going to save those things for garnishes. And then, like I said, with the lemon peel, we're going to do the exact same thing with the orange peel. We've got the pith side, and then we've got the outer side. Place the outer side facing down toward the drink, express those oils, and then I like to give it a little swirl. And if I'm doing it correctly, Lechaim, right? Yeah, cheers, old fashioned for you guys. Thanks again for having us. I'm excited to hear uh, how you guys wrap this up and feel free to stop by the distillery. Remember 10% off of the bottle purchase with the code JNF. Lahaim, you guys. Alex, we're to you. We're from yep. I was waiting uh, for everyone to make a drink. So uh, hi everybody, I'm Alex. I'm the co-chair of JNF Futures here in Denver and super excited to see all your faces. Wanna be seeing everybody's faces in person soon. Um, so excited for this pandemic to come to an end. But uh, this concludes the uh, sort of the formal part of our event, um, but we do encourage everybody to stick around for our after party. Um, I do wanna give a shout out to Holly at um, mythology distillery thank you for um, the drink tutorials and uh, all your participation uh, I do want to um, bring up two events that are coming up one of us one of them is ours and one of them is Yod's um, on the 17th Yod is hosting a hummus a virtual hummus making events which uh, sounds really cool um, on the 21st uh, JNF Future, we are hosting an event for, um, for LOTUM um, for Jewish Disabilities Month. So uh, I hope we hope everybody can join us for that as well. Um, well, if you guys did like your drinks, then you can stick around for uh, a chance to win a bottle from uh, Mythology Distillery with our Kahoot Trivia game. So uh, for those who are choosing to leave, thank you again for coming and uh, please stay in touch with us. Um, but for those of you that are staying with us, uh, we'll see you in a minute on our trivia. Thank you guys so much again for having me. This was really enjoyable. I hope uh, when things open back up, maybe we can have you to the distillery for an event. <laughs>